with a total area of 9,250 square kilometers and a population of approximately 1 million, Cyprus is the third largest island in the Mediterranean after Sicily and Sardinia. The impressive 2,000 meter high relief created on the island through long-term and unique geological processes led to the formation of a variety of microclimes, an exceptional natural environment, extensive forests, abundant flora and increased agricultural production, and rendered the island an excellent habitat for humans and for economic, social and cultural development. Cyprus's ascent from the seabed to today's impressive relief took place through the subduction of the African lithospheric plate under the Asian plate in the region of Petra Duromiu, where, according to myth, the goddess Aphrodite was born. When, 85 million years ago, and because of the divergent movement of the lithospheric plates and the bursting of the seabed of the Sea of Tethys, magma from the Earth's upper mantle began oozing out, pouring out in ever-increasing amounts, piling up and solidifying in the depths of the sea. These were the first stages of the creation of the Trodos Mountains and Cyprus in general. 30 million years ago, the movement of the lithospheric plates converged, with the African plate sliding underneath the Eurasian. The lighter geological composition of the African plate led to a constant uplifting of the Trodos Ophiolite, and 20 million years ago, these rose above the surface of the sea and formed a small island. During the Alpine Orogeny 10 million years ago, Mountain-sized blocks of recrystallized limestone were pushed towards the small island, also rising above sea level and forming a second island, which today constitutes the mountaintops of the Pendanachtilos range. Two million years ago began the drastic and differential rising of the Trodos Massif and the rising of the entire island, which took its final shape some 500,000 years ago. In Cyprus, aggregate industry activity had its onset in the beginning of the 20th century with the importation of Portland cement, first used for the laying down of the Cyprus railway tracks between 1900 and 1905, and expanded further after World War II with the prevalence of reinforced concrete in the construction industry. The first quarries were established in riverbeds and along the coasts, where naturally formed materials could be obtained through sieving and washing. This quarrying activity led to the environmental degradation of the coasts and the reduction of river aquifer enrichment and was abandoned for qualitative reasons shortly after 1974. The 1960s through to 1974 saw the development of quarries producing exceptional quality sand and crushed gravel from the Pendadactylos mountain range limestone. On July 20th, 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus and through force occupied 37% of the island. The results were dramatic for both the population and the development of the island. One third of the population became refugees in their own land while significant infrastructural works such as the Nicosia Airport and the island's largest port, that of Famagusta, were lost. The pressing need to restart the economy, to house the refugees and to build infrastructural works such as dams, ports, airports, motorways and tourist structures rendered imperative the establishment of new quarries on an organized basis within designated zones and in areas where geological and laboratory research indicated the existence of suitable rock reserves enabling the long-term operation of quarries. The most prevalent rock is the dye base encountered in the Trodos Mountains multiple vein system. The rock is hollow crystalline with a microcrystalline texture which renders it hard and durable. 
The multiple vein system forms an elliptical ring throughout the Trodos range, encircling the Plutonian rocks and in turn encircled by volcanic rocks throughout the same range. A total of nine quarries are currently in operation in the region, and it's these that produce most of Cyprus's aggregates. These are in the areas of Stavrovuni, Farmakas, Vasa and Pareklisia. The second type of rock is the reef limestone encountered along Cyprus's southern shores and the more recent reef limestone in the Mitzero area. A total of 11 quarries producing sand and crushed gravel are currently operating in the Mitzero, Xilofago and Polis Chrysochu areas. The third type of rock is the calcareous sandstone of the Nicosia geological formation, which was formed in a shallow sea. Here, three quarries are in operation in the Ivalion and Kelia areas, providing the island's batching plants with sand, which makes the concrete more workable. Having transformed from purely family-run businesses to thoroughly modern ones, Cyprus's quarries have, as their first priority, the supplying of the market with top quality products conforming to EU standards. Priority is also given to the safety and health of the workforce, as well as to that of the local residents and neighbouring communities through the use of dust suppression systems in all installations and on surrounding roads. Cyprus's quarries today employ specialized scientific staff, while latest technology methods and mechanical equipment have also been gradually introduced, covering all production phases, such as research for locating the best possible material and site, designing the quarry and the production unit, as well as calculating the size of reserves, the carrying out of environmental studies and restoration plans and the securing of all necessary licenses and permits from the various state services. The use of explosives for quarrying. The loading and transporting of the material from the quarry to the processing unit in modern trucks and through the use of modern equipment. The crushing of the rock in successive phases through the use of various types of crushers. The gradation of the crushed material through the use of special sieves in the production of the final products. Slurry treatment and water recycling systems. Washing the sand in special machines so as to enhance its qualitative characteristics. And finally, the selling of the final products in order to cater for the needs of the market. A basic precondition for the placement of the aggregates on the market is their compliance with the minimum standards established by EU criteria concerning the quality of the aggregates. Within the scope of market supervision, the state's competent services carry out quality controls on the aggregates, while all crushing plants have the flexibility to regulate any variations of the quality characteristics of the quarry's rock. Cyprus's aggregates industry places particular importance on the holding of environmental studies and the implementation of measures aimed at restoring the environment following the completion of any quarrying activity. Pine and cypress trees as well as various kinds of endemic shrubs and bushes, are included among the species planted and irrigated through the use of special support systems for the first three years. Despite Cyprus's dry climate, one can see many successful examples of such restorative activities. The Cyprus Aggregates Producers Association has been striving since its establishment in 1980 
to improve its members' activities. It also has regular contact with the European Aggregates Producers Association, the UEPG, of which it's a member since 2010. In Cyprus, stone has been a basic building material since Neolithic times and all the way to today. Initially, as one can see in the Neolithic settlement of Hirokitia, the main source of the building blocks were the nearby riverbeds, in the catchment basins of which one finds the most durable materials. Throughout the centuries, building materials provided by one's immediate environment were used. The wealth and variety of Cyprus's architectural heritage is showcased in practically all traditional settlements in the ancient and Byzantine monuments gracing the mountain areas and the Cyprus countryside in general. As in days of old, so today is the aggregates industry necessary for the development of any modern society and is also compatible with sustainable development so that future generations can have access to basic construction materials while at the same time living within an environmentally sound and nature-protecting world. <laughs>